Hi students, welcome to Year 11 Biology and the Cells as the Basis of Life module. This is video number three, and we're going to be looking at examining cells. In this particular video, we're going to be looking at the statement that you need to investigate different cellular structures, including but not limited to a variety of prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells. Now, the best way to do this is actually through the microscope, and hopefully you'll have the opportunity in class to look at a variety of different types of cells, both prepared or pre-prepared slides, as well as slides that you can make yourself. Uh, at a range of different types of organisms to start trying to get a bit of a feel for the different types of cells that are present. But it's important that at least you have a little bit of an idea of what you're looking at and of course that we've made sure that we're clear about the difference between prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells. So in this video the key is to uh, start an examination of cells in order to try and see if we can start to distinguish between prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells. One thing that's useful at this stage is to set up a little table as you are looking at each of these different cell types so you can start to identify the structures that may be present in prokaryotic cells that may not be present in eukaryotic cells and vice versa. An examination of cells can happen in two ways. Obviously it can involve um, specific technologies such as microscopes and you will have the opportunity to look at cells through the microscope during class but it also um, the other type of technology that we have a lot now uh, is computer technology and uh, that allows us to view a lot of different images that have been saved over time a lot of different pre-prepared uh, slides and also saved images of from a lot of different sources that have allowed us um, to look at both these different types of cells in quite a lot of detail. We will look in the next video at how our understanding of uh, cells and the structures within cells have really gone hand in hand with the development of technology, specifically microscopy. Um, but for now, the key is to start looking at some of these structures and seeing what we can recognize in both cells. So the first thing that hopefully becomes obvious to you is that there are structures that are present in both prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells. A plasma membrane is particularly important. Um, plasma membrane or cell membrane, basically we're talking about a bag here that is going to hold the contents of the cell together. So anything kind of wraps around the fluid material inside, and in fact the fluid material inside the cytoplasm is also common to both prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells. The fact that what it contains may be very different does not um, deter us from identifying cytoplasm as a common feature of both prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells. So we've got a bag and we've got fluid inside the bag and those two things are common. But you can also see a structure um, that I've circled here called a ribosome. Now ribosomes are sites of protein production. What we will do is go into a little bit of detail about enzymes and enzymes are critical chemicals in cellular processes. They are involved in everything from digestion to um, synthesis reactions, creating new molecules, uh, breaking things down. They are um, fantastic biomolecules and they're ones that we will look at in a little bit of detail um, as we go through this course. The ribosomes are the site where a lot of proteins are made and proteins need to be made in all, all types of cells both prokaryotic and eukaryotic and so that's where um, it's important to identify that they're present in both. The fact that when we look through our fossil record we see that prokaryotic organisms have a much longer history than eukaryotes. They, they um, are first known from the fossil record over three billion years ago and had the uh, earth to themselves for probably at, at a minimum half a billion years and maybe longer um, where there were no eukaryotic organisms where prokaryotes basically ruled the earth. Subsequent to that though we had a development of um, eukaryotic organisms and some of what happened there was cells engulfing other cells. So what we what we now call the membrane bound organelles which is the key to eukaryotes so structures like a nucleus or a chloroplast, um, a mitochondrion 
all of these are specific structures that contain membrane bound organelles and one way of getting a membrane bound organelle a thing inside of another cell is for that first cell to engulf the second now if it's digestive enzymes break that material down that cell down and it, and it disappears well all of its cell contents will basically be redistributed through the cell but if it holds some sort of level of integrity then we can start to get a little bit of an idea about how cells might have uh, changed over time but of course that's something that we'll look at um, at uh, later parts of this course you can also see in this particular uh, example that the prokaryote has a flagellum and there's a number of structures which you may see around the outside of a um, prokaryotic cell this can include things like a cell wall uh, pili or cilia uh, little projections that come out of the cell and even capsules um, you may uh, be familiar and if not we will have a look particularly when we look at diseases that um, some prokaryotic bacteria can be classified either as gram positive or gram negative and depending on, on how well they take up certain chemicals uh, and how well we can identify them and in fact that development was one of the key ones that um, went hand in hand with our understanding of antibiotics and the fact that our early antibiotics were um, affecting some uh, bacteria in a very positive way and really reducing their numbers but not all we had to continue to look for other uh, alternatives so um, that's where things like streptomycin also developed alongside the development of penicillin when you're looking at these types of cells the other thing that's very important is scale uh, and one thing that, that does limit us a little bit when we're using our light microscope to look at prokaryotic cells is the fact that they are significantly smaller of the order of 10 uh, to 50 to 100 times smaller than the eukaryotic cells so you can see animals and plant cells examples of eukaryotic cells was the bacteria is an example of a prokaryotic cell and you can see it's of a sort of order of magnitude of the mitochondria which is um, a an organelle that's present in um, eukaryotic cells so uh, size is one other important indicator of the difference between prokaryotes and eukaryotes you can see some examples of bacteria cells on the slide here um, these are the uh, methicillin resistant staphylococci so um, the end part of that name the coccus uh, is an indicator of spherical cells we also have bacillus which are sort of rod shaped cells bacillus uh, and also spiral shaped cells uh, which are called spirilla or spirillum and um, and these are just some other examples of bacterial cells and we will also look at um, some of the prokaryotic cells that are um, also not classified as as bacterial cells but a part of uh, another very ancient group called the archaea and they're found in some very um, extreme environments high salt levels high heat levels um, very dry those sorts of uh, extreme kind of environments one quick thing too to add to what we've looked at is the fact that uh, fungal cells are also eukaryotic uh, so if we compare them with a prokaryotic organism a fungi tend to be a little bit simpler they do have some things in common with plant cells but the most important thing they don't have is chloroplasts so they're not capable of um, producing their own food uh, being autotrophic in the way that plants are so they need to to gather their food from somewhere uh, and so there's some some cells too there that you might want to have a little bit of a look at as a comparison um, between prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells and on the left there is a, a transverse section of a celery you can actually start to get a sense of the um, cells that we're looking at here and also the fact that in some eukaryotic organisms um, there are different types of cells so they're not all identical and one very important thing that we're going to keep in mind as we go through our biology course is the relationship between structure and function and the fact that different cells found in different parts of organisms have a different structure suggests to us that they may also have a different function and in the celery these uh, little bundles here are very very important and involved in transport and we'll look at them when we look at plants uh, in, a, little, in, in a, a future module so um, have, take every opportunity to examine as many different types of cells as possible so you start to get a feel for the sort of um, structures that you find that are common to both prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells and how you can tell each of them apart. Thanks for watching.